if you leave yourself wide open to somebody of 18 stone who can really bang, you're asking for trouble. Boxing fans, we're here Look in London for uh, Bivol Betsbier, Betsbier Bivol, whichever way you want to call it. Big fight, but with me, Colin Hart. How are you, sir? How's things? I'm good. Come in, get rid of the flu. I was going to ask you how you're feeling because when I saw you on Saturday, you know, yeah. your voice wasn't in good yeah, shape, but you seem to be better. Right now, but it's better. Uh, people can now hear me swearing at them now. <laughs> Let's talk about this fight, Betsbier and Bivol, a fight for all the belts. Um, Listen, this is one that's been much anticipated for a long, long time. Finally, it seems like, provided there's no more injuries, that we're going to get there. Yeah. Just just give me your thoughts on this one, uh, Colin. How do you see this one sort of playing out? Well, this should be a classic. I've described it as the light heavyweight version of Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. That is how close they are and how well matched they are. And as I say, better be ever, and I don't mean this in a derogatory sense, is a beast when he gets in that ring. I mean, all right, he's 39 years of age, and he, sh you know, he shouldn't be where he is at 39. But unbeaten, is it 22 fights, 22 knockouts? And Bivol, I mean, he beat Canelo. And that gives you an idea how good he is. So, you know, Flip a coin. I mean, I happen to think better be able to win, but then it'll be the first time he's been taken the distance. I do want to ask you though, well, in regards to Bivol, we've seen him probably a little bit more uh, in recent times when he fought uh, Malik Zinad. Um, what do you make of Bivol in regards to his strengths? Does his strengths outstrength better be able to Well, it's not his strength, it's his skill. Yeah, his skills are, yeah. Yeah, that's what will be, will be better be have. He's so skillful, so clever. And, uh, you know, it's amazing, though, when you think two Russians are going to headline in Riyadh. It gives you an idea, the difference now with boxing where it used to be. I mean, it, it, is, every, it is a fight that every purist will want to see. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, the people on the fringes of boxing will have the same feeling because I'm sure they don't know too much about either of them. Yeah, and that is fair play to Riyadh season take care of shape because this fight was not getting made before we know that that, that was the situation. That shows you the influence of uh, you know His Excellency um, Al Sheikh is his uh, import they've got these fights to get, you know, th th these fights are now happening. They were all dream fights that we knew would probably never take place. Now, they're going to happen. And down the road, maybe he can work his magic, and his magic, of course, is money, and he can get Canelo and Crawford together. Colin, does this remind you of the good old days when fights were just getting made? You know, when we wanted good fights to happen, they were most of the time getting made. We had a lull in that where there were some fights not getting made for political issues, boxing politics. But now it seems, with the inclusion of Riyadh season, take El Sheikh, that now finally we can get the fights that the fans want to see. Yes, the reason we couldn't see them happening before, because the top fighters were contracted to rival TV uh, uh, stations and that's why they didn't happen but um, Turkey had a shake has driven right through that rubbish I do want to talk about Saturday night and the Anton Joshua Daniel Dubois fight before I do let you go um, just talk to me about that one you did speak to us after the fight but a couple of days now I've gone Carl Frotch has had his say on it as well, saying, listen, AJ's punch resistance seems to have gone. From what you saw on Saturday night, do you feel like his punch resistance has gone? Well, let's, for a start, um, he suddenly, his age caught up with him. Okay. Um, he's 36 next month. And uh, he fought like a novice. Hands down, chin in the air. What did he expect? Um, but I don't want to take anything away from Dubois, who was terrific on the night. He had a mindset. As soon as that opening bell started, he leapt off his corner and straight at uh, uh, Joshua. And 
he never really recovered from the first knockdown, in my opinion. Uh, but yes, his punch resistance wasn't there. But I don't care how old you are, if you if you leave yourself wide open to somebody of 18 stone who can really bang, you're asking for trouble. I, I do want to ask you. He has come out in a, a social media post saying that he's not calling it. That he is going to fight on. It seems like a Daniel Dubois rematch is possibly on the line. There, there's talks possibly about this. Would you advise Anthony Joshua to go back into a Dubois rematch? Listen, I've advised Derek Chisora in print to retire. I've advised Joe Joyce in print to retire. They're past their best, and they're you know just exposing themselves to unnecessary punishment. The same applies to AJ. Here is a man worth, according to the Sunday Times rich list, 175 million pounds. He's coming up 36. He'd been a, twice been a world champion. At his age, he's not going to get any better. He should do the sensible thing and retire. Mike check, one, two, three. Mike check, one, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the four crown showdown. We're just going to let this play out a little bit, but just just from what you're saying, if you just carry on from what you're saying in regards to um, uh, Anthony Joshua. Yeah, but let's face it, so many fighters, whatever weight division, go on much longer than they should. I mean, the classic example is Muhammad Ali. He should have finished arguably after the Manila fight with Frazier. I think he had nine fights after that, including one against Ernie Shavers. You know, absolutely stupid. I am going to go on the other side of the argument now, so I'll pose a question to yourself. If, if I said to you, okay, maybe that was just an off night for Anthony Joshua, we saw the performances leading up to that fight, you know, and he looked, he looked great. Um, would you then say to Anthony Joshua, maybe he would be able to give it another try? He's, he's, not, he's not calling it a day, but maybe that's the counter argument yeah, to yours. You know, you say he looked great. Who did he look great against? Nagano, who's a complete nutter novice. He did what he had to do, knocked out novice. Wallin. Is he a world class fighter? Yes, he looked great against them, but you know, he should be to the sensor. I know he won't, because he'll be offered several more millions to carry on. And if if Fury doesn't beat Usyk in December, I still say next year you will see Joshua and Fury without a title, and the British public will fall for it. Yeah, I was going to ask you the demand for that now. Uh, if Fury does lose to Usyk, which is what you said, is the demand for the fight still there then, providing that both fighters come off a loss? Or does it matter if Fury loses or wins? Well, yeah, your health matters. Okay, yeah. I, I mean in regards to demand, but yeah, of, of course health matters. Um, in regards to the demand, what, what the public wants, do you feel that like there'll still be a demand for that fight in 2025? Yes, of course there will. I mean, it'll be built up. Um, yes, there will be. Whether it's... Uh, it won't sell 96,000 at Wembley, but nevertheless, there'll be a great deal of interest in it. It's been on simmering for so many years now. I mean, it's like uh, Pacquiao and uh, Mayweather, Julia, all those years ago. Just a final one before I let you go. Uh, Simon Jordan had his bit to say on this, and he said, listen, uh, Anthony Joshua, why is he entitled to a rematch with Dubois? Because he wasn't the champion to start off with. Why is there a rematch clause possibly in place? Do you agree with that notion? That, that Why is there sort of a rematch in place? Well, there's no, apparently, there is no rematch clause in the contract. But if he wants to fight uh, Dubois again, and Dubois wants to fight him again there's no reason why he shouldn't although those people behind waiting to get their chance will object obviously well, colin listen it's always a pleasure to talk to you so it's always good break down boxing with uh, a legend like yourself thank you so much for giving pro boxing fans your time and uh, speak to you soon thank you very much my pleasure